providing children and young adults with autism a community to learn and grow. And organizations like Islands of Brilliance are changing the perceptions of those on the autism spectrum from people with disabilities to people with abilities. So Islands was basically created, uh, the inspiration was our own son, Harry, who was identified as autistic at the age of three. Mm -hmm. For reference, he's now 24. Okay. Uh, and what we learned is if we made learning about his area of interest, and for Harry it was trains, he would engage. Islands of Brilliance is really a space where children, uh, teens and young adults with autism can come together and embark on creative endeavors, interacting with technology um, and one-to-one -one mentorship with artists from the community. So what we do uh, is we take what's called our their spin. Okay. Uh, and those who aren't familiar, it's a term that the young adult community with autism has coined for special interest area. And we use that spin as an entry point to engage with our participants in creati creative endeavors. And typically we have a pretty extensive onboarding process, so we want to know as much as we can. We ask about that area of interest. We call it spin, so that special interest. Okay. So we want to know about that. We embrace that, we welcome it, and we just kind of, you know, that's where the students thrive, is when they know that it's a safe place that they can be in. We've been around for about 10 years, and we have a variety of programming that was designed for the autistic population. Uh, we really zone in on that area of interest, so if you're into Minecraft or trains or Pokemon, that's our starting point. But like you said, we bring in creativity, imagination, and ideally technology. One thing I tell parents is that we like to take consumers of technology and turn them into creators. And that's a much different uh, part of the brain that's being used. What I like to say, very basically, is that person's brain is wired differently. Okay. So when you look at it from that lens, just the way a PC is different than a Mac, mm -hmm. when you think about it, just that simplistic lens, that person's brain is wired differently and needs different things. And if you just come to accept that and think of that as normal, then it's actually pretty beautiful. So what we've learned over the years is rather than trying to get individuals with autism to fit into our space, we, we enter into their space so that we can reach them more fully and start to form a community with them. Everybody deserves to have an opportunity to be creative and I feel like we talk about this all the time. Not only just people with autism, but everyone in this world. So I think it's really important that we give and serve people who are really reaching for something or really trying to find something to build community. And so this is the population that we serve because I think it's really important that all of us feel this sense of community. Natalie touched on community. What often happens with families is they'll come to us and they're like, they feel isolated, they feel yeah. alone. Uh, they feel like nobody gets their kid, nobody gets them, they can't go places. So even if it's virtual, um, our students feel a sense of connection. They will log on to be with their friends. So one big thing that we do every workshop is we celebrate each other. So Aww. show us what you made, how did you make it, what were you inspired by, and then we all celebrate that student in the way that the student would like us to oh, celebrate. Nice. So we'll okay, pin their screen and then it will like show them for everybody and they'll like walk around and be like, oh, this is what I created and everyone will be like celebrating and yes. putting in the chat like what an amazing project you so did. A big so. piece of what we do is we celebrate yes. the work. So yeah. I mean, we just, it's all about empowering our students. How can we use creativity to help students amplify their voices? Mm -hmm. So students who may have communication challenges often can communicate their needs and what their dreams are and their passions are through art. How do we make the everyday a sensory creativity experiment? Yes. Because it's a way of expressing yourself, right? And so often our students with autism are basically told how to do things and mm -hmm. what to do, but we use creativity as a way to say, hey, what do you love? Show us what you love and show us through this creative yeah. process. Mm -hmm. And really, it's the, the outcome is really more the engagement and the interaction yeah. and not the art. We offer like hands-on craft making. We offer a space for our students to doodle with us. We also do a storytelling workshop called Natter Days. We do the life skills course. We do foundation workshops. So we try to hit, there's so many aspects and, and layers to creativity and we want to try to, to get all of them because it triggers different areas of your brain. Do you feel like you see your students with just a, a sense of pride? I'd see the students see themselves with a sense of pride too, which is even more important right? yes. because they're, they feel really proud of who they are and they feel welcome to be who they, they We don't need to fix them, right? They no, are welcome right. to be who they are. So I'm the director of technology for Islands of Brilliance and I sat down with Mark and Margaret, the, the co-founders. You know, I think our job is to give as much fluency to the students as possible, but not necessarily worry about 
the tool, but think more about the technique and how that technique allows them to share their stories visually. Honestly, I don't really care so much about that final product. I'll celebrate it, I'll celebrate the efforts, right? But it's really just residue and a brick in the path. It's evidence of you putting all sorts of really good tactics in place, but it's not really the thing that I care about. The thing that I actually care about is what's often in that black box of creativity is the stuff that happens in the process. So my goal at the beginning of the year with my bosses was how, how does how is a sausage made, right? Like how can I expose that creative process? Where I come in is in the later stages of the 14 plus cohort. I'm running something called Digital Academy and a bunch of different programs that address the needs of a 14 plus population that just so happens to have autism. Quest is kind of our cream of the crop. Uh, it's what we have for our self-determined students who apply with a project. They get awarded a three week, six week or nine week project with us and they have access to two mentors and everyone else who's on the quest. On Mondays, we say what we're gonna do. On Fridays, we talk about what we've done and we give all sorts of feedback. And again, it's like growth over time. You can literally see people's growth as they develop new skills. I had said like, I wanna reveal what's inside that black box of creativity and break it apart and see the iterations that, that lead to the product. So let me talk about SideQuest. It happens over two days and it's four hours. So it's like a side quest in a video game. It's not the main thing that you do. It's something that you derail off your normally scheduled gaming and you go and you grind, you spend a couple hours, you come back with new toys, new skills, new techniques. This is that. We all go through the same tutorial for the first day. I'm, I make it an explicit point. This is here for you to learn how to teach yourself. One thing I would say is that mentors do not know the content. So everybody is learning the tutorial at the same time. There's benefit to that because I'm able to teach students how to categorize information as it comes in because that like having an attachment to a prior bit of knowledge is so helpful in teaching students to like always look for those associations and categories. Launching this year is a program called The Fellowship. Supported by the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, The Fellowship brings our services to rural areas in central and northern Wisconsin. We will partner with each community's library to train local special educators and artists to deliver IOB programming to autistic individuals aged 16 and older. Our experienced team in Milwaukee will provide guidance via Zoom to train facilitators in iPad-based software using our approach. In each session, students will connect socially with peers to work on special interest-driven creative projects under the guidance of two on-site fellows. This expansion aims to improve access to quality intervention services for autistic individuals in underserved regions, empowering communities to embrace interconnectedness and creativity through technology. I would say that Islands is definitely a very fun community and there is a lot to have to do there. And there are plenty of things that provide a lot of unique learning experiences for many of the students here, not just me. And it's a place where you could learn about each other and grow with each other and just have an overall good time.